All right, web series have been gaining more and more popularity, pulling people away from their televisions and headed to their computer screens. So please welcome from one of the best web series around right now, The Lizzie Bennett Diaries, Ashley Clements. Hey! Hey over here, how's it going? Good. Take a seat on the comfortable couch that we have here. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. Now, uh, even though this is gonna air uh, next week, mm -hmm. it is the day after Halloween, so tell me, uh, what are your, some of your favorite Halloween memories? There's gotta be some good ones. I have, I grew up in a very serious Halloween area. Okay. It, it was not, it was not to be taken lightly. We moved, we moved there when I was about three, but, um, but it was the beginning of October and a police officer came to our door and said, do you know what you got into? That's my never a good sign. My, <laughs> my parents said, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> and they said, you're going to get about a thousand trick-or-treaters and it's not okay to run out of candy because oh you will be egged. And nice. <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> right? And uh, and my mother insisted that we give everyone two pieces of candy. That was very important to okay. her. I'm not sure why, but very generous. Hooray, of my course, mother. Of course. And, um, and every year we got about 100 or 200 more trick-or-treaters. So throughout my life, the, the entire living room would be taken over with candy. My mom would count, not opening the bags, she'd be feeling through the bags, counting how much it was and keeping lists and tallies yeah. of how much candy there was. We couldn't have any candy before Halloween because we could not run out I of candy. I was going to say, I was like, not, how do you not weigh 4,000 pounds right now? Your mom raised you on Halloween candy? <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't, you couldn't eat any of it because, you know, we, you can't run out. And right. then if we had too much, by the end of the night, she'd be giving people three pieces. Oh. Um, we mostly, by the end of Halloween, though, we would have maybe like one bowl of candy left, down from literally thousands of pieces of Did candy. Did she basically enlist she you? Counted. You couldn't even go out and trick or treat because you were like enlisted as workers for no, her in this like I mean, sweatshop Halloween day. I mean, part of the reason it was <laughs> part of the reason it was such a popular place to trick or treat was because it was a really nice neighborhood. It was okay. really safe. It was flat, and people went all out with the decorations and things. I mean, yeah. we we also had to go all out with decorations. So. Um, it was really fun, and I, all my friends would come over and go trick-or-treating with me because yeah. my neighborhood was totally the neighborhood to do that in. Of course. Um, as I got older, I would, you know, be manning the door yeah. more because that, you know. Too cool for school. Well, eventually you get, you know, you, you get old enough, you try to go trick-or-treating, people are like, um. It's just kind of sad. I don't have to give you free stuff anymore. Yeah. Like, you're an adult it's now. Like, go mow some lawns, deliver some newspapers. Like, seriously. <laughs> okay, so I have to ask, one other thing I heard about you that I think is really cool is you spent some time in Europe in college studying abroad, which is really cool. I have to ask for a college girl at the time, uh, what are the guys like over there compared to the guys over here in the States? It's definitely different culturally. Okay. Um, I did a semester in London first, and um, it, wasn't, it wasn't so different there. I would say the personal space bubbles are a little smaller okay. than we are used to in America. We kind of have like wide personal space bubbles, and in Europe they're just kind of smaller. Uh, so that was something I started to get used to in London. I'm really glad I did London first because okay. the second semester I did in Florence, okay. Italy. And, uh, you know, amazing, beautiful place, beautiful, Absolutely. Every, yeah, magical. Um, but I stick out there. I don't look Italian. Not completely. Um, and, uh, I, I mean, rarely in my life do I get to say that I look exotic. But in Italy, I, I look kind of exotic because, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I'm pale. I have red hair. And <laughs> walking down the street, I was um, interesting, I guess. Yeah. And, um, you know, every day was an opportunity for somewhere between 10 and, I don't know, 50 men to say something to me. And mostly it was just, ciao, bella, ciao, bella, ciao, bella. I mean, that's very... Yeah. Um, kind of the norm. Um, a few times when I, was, I felt a little uncomfortable, but but it, those uncomfortable times really highlight the times that were sort of wonderfully sweet yeah. and make them very memorable. Um, one time I was on a train going to Rome and there was a man kind of staring at me and I was like, whatever, I, mean, I was used to being stared at at that point in Italy. And eventually he came over to me and didn't say anything and he handed me a little piece of paper. Okay. I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. And I took this piece of paper and then he walked away and I looked at this piece of paper and it was a page torn out of a date book. It was like May 26th or something. And it said, um, it said, you are beautiful as a rose. And there was a crude drawing of a flower. No there. phone number, nothing? Nothing. It was just. Oh, oh that's adorable. <laughs> Actually, my. <laughs> that's adorable. <laughs> I don't know. My favorite part of it was that um, it was April and the page was for May, and I thought, what, what happens when you get 
<laughs> to May, just and you're like, off, I'm missing I a date in my calendar <laughs> book. I don't know. I don't know what happened to it. You'll just like, have to take it. It's day in off, my I scrapbook. Guess. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> now I can't wait any longer. We have to get to the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, the LBD. LBD. The LBD. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm obsessed with this show. It has ruined my life completely. <laughs> I hadn't seen it for a while, and I was like, you know what? I've heard good things about the show. I'm going to check it out. And I watched, like, 50 episodes in one sitting. And then you guys, like, hadn't posted new ones yet, which drove me insane. And then today, even, I get to work. Episode 60 went up this morning. I get to work, and the girl who sits next to me was trying to talk to me about work-related things. And I was like, you shut up until I get to see Darcy's face, and then I will go back to work. I am obsessed with it. It's ridiculous. So can you please tell people who don't know, what is Lizzie Bennet Diaries? The Lizzie Bennet Diaries <laughs> is a YouTube adaptation of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And um, it's done vlog style. So right. uh, you're seeing it all from Lizzie's perspective. She's in her room with her camera, and she's telling you all about these people, like that annoying guy Darcy and her sister's love life and all of these things. And her friend Charlotte and her sisters Lydia and Jane yeah. are on it all the time. Now, and how did you get involved in the show? I just auditioned for it like anything else. Really? I mean, I had no idea what I was walking into. I mean, I loved Pride and Prejudice already. Okay. So, so the, the, I, the concept of it interested me. I thought like, oh, that, that could be good. Yeah. It could also be terrible. But, yeah. you know, that's true when you walk into it's so risky, many auditions. It's a risky uh, it, idea. It totally is. Absolutely. You know, but, um, but I got the sides and they were good. And, um, and the other people auditioning were good. So I thought, you know, this has real possibility. But no, nobody, none of us, no one involved ever thought, that it would become what it has become because it's kind of... It's been, I mean, you guys have had standing room only uh, pressers at BitCon. You've had, I mean, the followings on Twitter. I mean, you guys have tons of fans. It's really, really cool. It's so fun. It's so <laughs> rewarding. And, you know, because the show is online, fans are already at their computers. So they just, they head over to Twitter and Tumblr right. and Facebook. And I get to interact with them immediately. And they're so wonderful and so enthusiastic. And they make it just so much fun. <clears throat> now, I have to bring this up. One of the interesting things about this show, for everybody watching right now, is that this show is actually filmed at my apartment. That's true. <laughs> That's true it is. As much as I made it look like I'd never met her before, I actually have met Ashley. Okay, so it's filmed at my apartment. My roommates are uh, some of the producers on the show. They help create the show. And uh, so I have to ask. You met me a long time ago. I want to know what your first impression of me was. <laughs> what was your impression of the roommate? Um... The first impression I remember having, I think I'd seen you before. I, I mean, there was so much going on in the first day of shooting mm -hmm. that I didn't know who half the people were because there were right. like PAs and stuff. But I'm in, I'm in that room. I'm in Lizzie's room right. nonstop. Which is so not, it's my roommate's it's room. It's not. My room is the wardrobe room, so I get kicked out of my apartment. So for we, the rest of we the day. take off our clothes in your room. <laughs> you are not. Why do I leave everybody? What's wrong with me? Um, it's like yeah, taking candy so, from a baby. So I was, I, I was a little, I mean, overwhelmed day one. The first time I remember meeting you, um, I think my impression was that you were a, a really impressive sleeper. That is very true, everybody. <laughs> because I can sleep through anything. <laughs> because sometimes we don't have your room for wardrobe first thing you know in the morning. What? Because sometimes Friday nights are busy nights. True, but I can't believe that there's like. 12, 15 people in your apartment, and we're doing a show, and I'm talking at least this loudly, and you sleep right through it. I'd right say, next I've always door. said, if there's an earthquake, <laughs> right the whole building could come door. down, and I will at least be in my bed still. At least I'll land on a mattress. So my first impression of you is accurate then. <clears throat> okay. What is your current, has it changed in any way whatsoever? Well, now I know what you're like awake. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it took some time to get to that point. That's okay. Now I think okay. you're super oh, great. Wow. Suck it up. <laughs> okay, I have to. The last thing I want to ask you about is uh, with a show like Lizzie Bennet Diaries that's based on a very popular novel and movies have been made about it, everybody kind of knows where this is going for the most part. I mean, they know, like, okay, these people are going to get with these people and all this stuff's going to happen. How do you guys still make it? exciting and, and, and uh, twist those plot lines around so that people are like, think they know what's going to happen but don't really know. Like, what's coming up? Well, I can't really tell well, you what's yeah. coming up. But, um, but I think the, the structure of the show in, it, in itself affects the plot because these are a bunch of people who know they're on camera right. and other people can watch them. And that means other people in the world can watch them. And so everyone who just experienced Darcy Day knows that uh, that Darcy is now aware of the videos and he's going to watch them and that's going to change things in yeah. ways that obviously doesn't happen in Pride and Prejudice <laughs> because there's no video diaries. Yeah, they only, they only had like the Power Max. Um, they didn't have like the webcams. And, you know, it's, 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so who knows about it affects things. And we definitely have some interesting twists and turns coming up that I think are true to, you know, the heart of the story. Um, and of course, the major elements of it are still going to happen All in, right. you know, some fashion. Okay. But there's some stuff coming up that's actually really unique to our story that I'm excited about. There's some stuff that happens only in the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, it was wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much for coming out. If I get fired from my job, you're the first person I will blame. That seems fair. Uh, for taking me away from my work to watch your show. But, <clears throat> so thank you for coming out. Up next, we will be listening to music from Pacifier. But before that, I was very fortunate. I got to go hang out with a Formula Drift pro racer, Frederick Osbo, and I rode shotgun in his car. Take a look.